Hey, how y'all doing? Welcome back. Guess what came in the mail today? Um, but first, I need to change the propane tank on my heater because it's cold today. It's like 32 degrees outside. And we got a cold front coming in. It's supposed to be down in the single digits next week. So, burr. There we go. Let's open it up, see what we got. Make sure it's the right one. There's a packing slip. Look at this fancy thing. Four bolt looks to be the uh, long, long spline and heavy. Looks good. All right, so let's get started. I'm all set up here. Got the implements of torture laid out on the floor. Let's get this wheel off, take the hub off, and then we'll compare them side by side to make sure they're the same. Yeah, it looks to be about two and seven sixteenths, or I'm gonna call it sixty-two millimeters. And that one looks the same, two and seven sixteenths, or sixty-two millimeters. So that's that's a win-win. Another way to check, just put it on a car. Make sure it fits. Ah, look at there. Plenty of room for the nut and no wobble. Heck yeah. So this is going to work. Okay, something else I wanted to check was flatness. It's got a straight edge here. I don't see no gap in it. I think we got a good one. All right, now I just gotta get it cleaned up and painted so it don't rust up. Okay, I've decided to let this paint dry and cure overnight. I'll come back tomorrow and we'll put this thing together. But for all y'all out there, it'll be this quick. And just like that, it's the next day. Let's see what it looks like. Oh yeah, it's red. Looks pretty good. Okay, let's get this puppy on here. Okay, some of y'all may have seen this tool before. Never use this to torque this nut with. 
this is designed to like if you get a stubborn one you got to get off and put it on there and then hit it with a hammer knock your nut loose but you don't want to use this to torque the nut because if you over torque this which would be easy to do if you was hitting that with a hammer you can break the end of this axle stub off it just break it just snaps off right there where the threads are at Okay, so you, so you can use this tool to torque with. You set your torque wrench to 225 or whatever your specified torque is. And then you put torque wrench in there. But this has to be at a 90 degrees like that. You can't do it out there. It changes the torque. But if you keep this at 90 degrees to your wrench, it keeps the same torque. So, yeah, so you can use this. I just prefer the other tool. It takes less effort. You can also use a 36 millimeter socket directly to your torque wrench. So, don't use this to torque. What you want to use is this tool. This is a torque multiplier. And this is designed to fit four four hole lug or the wide five. These holes are for the four four lug and these holes are for the wide five. This tool is a made by Impy. I think you can pick it up at Apple Tree or J Bugs if they're not sold out. These don't have to be super tight, you just want to snug them up. That should be plenty. Now you put this On here, see, I want to, going to be tightening, so yeah, I want to go this way. All right, this gizmo, he goes right in here. I got to turn this over. and those teeth on that gear. Sometimes you gotta plate it a little bit. And it tells you right on here what the multiplication is. Uh, 25 foot pounds on your torque wrench will take it up to 225. 30 foot pounds takes it up to 270. But you need probably need around 250 on these. Yeah, it fits really tight. I don't know if they all fit this tight or if it's just mine. Probably just mine. There it is. Check, make sure our car keyhole is lined up. 
Looks like it might be. May have went a little too far. Yeah. I can use this tool to back it up just a little bit. this back off. Spread our cotter key out. Okay, y'all see me struggling trying to get this caliper on and I was beating on it with a hammer. Never do that. That's not the proper way to do it. If it don't go on there, something ain't right. Um, so off camera, I measured this rotor. This one is 50 thousandths of an inch thicker than the old one or 1.4 millimeter sticker for my friends in the UK so I've done lots of brake jobs in my life and usually you can take pull your pads out and use a C clamp or or something to squeeze those pistons back in to spread them out this this style caliper you can't get these pads out there's two pins in the back that hold the pin, hold the pads in. So I think I could drive them out to get the pads out. If not, I gotta disassemble this caliper to get the pads out. So to do that, to make that easier, I need to disconnect it from the brake line, take it to the bench, and work on it. Uh, and then we're gonna see if the alignment is correct on the rotor. Yeah, we're gonna do that. The easiest thing to do would be take this down, have it turn, have it turn down, have them take fifty thousandths off of it. But that's not the right way to do it. You don't want to sacrifice your rotors for that. So we're gonna make this work. Okay, so I've got the caliper over here in my vise. Um, let me zoom you in here a little bit. See these two pins right here? These uh, hold your brake pads in. So to remove those, there's two little clevis pins right here. See the little clevis pin? Put them over here in my bucket so I don't lose them. Now these pins should drive out. Just like that. Now our brake pads come out. There's our brake pads.
Now, let's see if these will squeeze in. Reinstall our little clevis pins. Okay, I tried to get this camera in here as close as I could to show y'all what's going on. You can see right there, that's how much play you got, how much room you got to wiggle. And it needs to be as center as possible on that rotor. So, what I'm going to have to do is grind some metal off the inside of this caliper right here on both sides so this will line up right. And you're asking, is that right? And I've watched a couple of videos and read some literature on this on, on installing these MP brake calipers and sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes it'll be the other way and you have to shim it out the other way with washers so we're going to take it back over to the bench and take a file and file away for a while okay so right here is the area I was talking about that we're going to have to take down a little bit it's kind of raised up right there so I'm not getting into the this part of the metal, it's just, it's raised up right there where it connects to the uh, the bracket over there. So, what I'm going to do is take this file and very gently, I'm going to keep my file flat, and file these down until I get it down. Check it periodically, make sure it's, I don't want to go too much, but I want to get enough. So. I want to continue doing that, and when I get it ready, we'll put it on the car. Alright, so after a couple hours of fouling, uh, finally got fed up with it, broke the grinder out, ground on it some and then took the file back to it again to flatten it out got it pretty good I'm not saying this is the best way to do this I'm not saying this is the right way to do this it's not the right way, it's not the wrong way, but it's my way I, I do what I can do with what I got so it's what I did we got some thunderstorms rolling in tonight. You may hear that in the background. Rain, thunder. But we got this down pretty good. Fits on the car. So we're going to put it on. And it's not perfect, but it's good enough. Yeah, that rain's coming down. Plus a storm tonight. And then turn off cold. We're supposed to get snow in a couple of days. Let's get this brake line hooked back up. Let me 
see the rotor turns free. And it's a win-win for me. If you work on these old cars very much, like I do, you'll understand what all this modification was about with this caliper. You know, we buy these aftermarket parts for these cars, and they're made in other parts of the world that don't have quality control. And uh, sometimes they fit good, sometimes they don't. You just never know what you're going to get. So that's what it's all about. I've run into this several times on other projects. A lot of the parts we get are not, you know, up to standard. And will they work? Yeah, but they're not going to work right out of the box sometimes. Sometimes you got to modify them. So in case you were wondering why I had to do all this to make it work, that's why. Because the parts are just not, you know, they're not, they don't have the quality standard that they should have. You know, none of these parts come from Germany anymore, and they're not made in the USA either. But, uh, yeah, so that's that's the way it is. You know, sometimes you got to modify parts to make them work, and that's what we did here. And it, there's probably easier ways to do what I just did, but what I did worked, and that's what it's all about, making it work. So, it's time for a conclusion of this wobbly wheel mystery. We had a wobbly wheel. We took it apart. Discovered that the rotor was bad. So I ordered a new rotor. We got that in. And, uh, beginning of this video, before, before all this, uh, caliper modification, and, editing this video and discovered most of it was about painting and cleaning nobody wants to see that crap so y'all won't get to see all that uh, so yeah got the new rotor in got it on it was a little bit different than the old one the caliper didn't want to fit back on there right so we modified the caliper y'all seen all that got it back on and I uh, gotta put this wheel back on here in a little bit and uh, my brother's supposed to come over tomorrow he'll help me bleed the brakes out it's supposed to snow here in a day or two hopefully we can get out go for a snow ride that might be fun and uh, yeah I'm gonna wrap it up wrap it up right here and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.